Buying your, your first home or, or branching out and buying your first investment property can be a, a very daunting process. Today I want to discuss five tips that I wish I knew before I went out and bought my first property. The first thing is to get really clear on why you're actually buying. Are you buying a home for yourself to, to live in that's a personal monument, something that's fancy that you can show off to your friends? Or are you buying a property as a financial vehicle to help you achieve financial freedom a little bit earlier or help achieve your financial goals? So get clear on exactly why you're buying that investment property or buying that home for yourself to live in. Is it something that is going to be ultra comfortable, that's fancy that you can show off to your friends? Or is it a financial vehicle to help you succeed financially? Very rarely do these two actually align and these two goals have anything really in common when it comes to property. So get clear on why you're buying. That's probably my biggest tip. Um, number two is to save, save, save. The closer to that 20% deposit you can have or over that 20% deposit, you'll avoid things like loan mortgage insurance, which is very, very costly, especially if you're buying at a higher price point. Um, so if you can save and have that full 20% deposit, it will make buying that much more achievable and affordable. If you're buying an investment, that difference between having zero deposit or a full 20% deposit can often be the difference between a property being cash flow positive or cash flow negative. So take the time to really save, save, save. Um, but at the same time, if it is taking too long to, to save the full 20%, don't be worried about buying a property with a, a 10% deposit and paying a little bit of LMI. If the deal makes sense, it's often worth pursuing because you'll make that money either when you buy, if the buy is a really good buy, or in the long run. The third tip, sort of contradictory to, to save, 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 and that is to buy as soon as possible. There's an old saying that you shouldn't wait to buy real estate, you should buy real estate and wait. That is, the sooner you own real estate, historically it has, has gone up over time since records date back since the early sort of 1900s real estate has increased in value over time so the sooner you can buy it the higher the chances are that you'll start to see those prices increase obviously it's not always the case prices can go down they can go up um i think but like i say i think time in the market is more important than timing the market especially if you're buying a good property um that is at a discount my fourth big tip is to buy locally as much as it can be tempting to, to buy in some way that looks like it's booming, it's very hard to understand a, a local market, especially when it comes to real estate, unless you're spending a lot of time in that market. You can have a suburb and one street you would never touch, you would never buy in, it's a horrible street. And then 200 meters away in the same suburb, there might be an area that's absolutely booming. Um, there's a lot of money coming into, a lot of renovations happening. And unless you're buying locally, it's very hard to identify those up and coming areas and really sort of get a good grasp on what is a fantastic buy and what's a, a mediocre buy. So I do encourage you, especially for your first property or your first investment property is to, to buy locally. Um, also as an investment property, if you're buying locally, it means you can do the little maintenance items yourself. If a washer goes on a tap, you can YouTube how to change a washer and go out there and, and do it yourself. And, that will bring down the, the cost of ownership for that property. So really look at buying locally. If you can't afford to buy locally, if you are in, a, in an area where the, the median price is just far too expensive for you to afford, I do suggest then to have a look at other markets that, that are more affordable or that do have better cash flow. So really weigh that up, um, but I do recommend starting locally. You will be able to find a, a better deal just because you'll be able to spend more time in that market researching it and finding what is good buying. The final tip, number five, is to inspect a minimum amount of property. Set yourself a goal, be it 20 properties minimum to inspect, 50 properties minimum to inspect, or 100 minimum to inspect, and don't budge from that, from that goal, from that set rule. So often I see people come through and will buy the second property they inspect, um, and quite often they're just too excited, too emotional about the, the process. If you are, even if you're buying a home for, for yourself and you're wanting something fancy, still set yourself a minimum amount of property that you're gonna force yourself to inspect. It's so easy these days just to, to shop online and feel like you know the market because you've spent six months looking on realestate.com at, at different properties. But often 
there's hidden flaws in a property that aren't shown in the marketing, like the roof's about to collapse or the foundation's got rotten. It can be a little bit of deceptive when you're not actually going through and inspecting these properties. And the same can be true in the, the other direction. There's often really hidden features that are a huge benefit of a property, like there might be a park in the back, back or all four bedrooms are huge. Um, quite often you'll miss those things if you're just looking on realestate.com or domain or just looking online when you're, when you're looking at property. So force yourself to go and inspect a, a minimum number of properties. Set that as a, a rule and don't break that rule. It'll really help you identify what is a genuinely good buy in the marketplace and what's not a good buy and help you identify what areas may actually be improving in price and really help you achieve those those financial goals or even if you are just looking to, to buy that fancy property to show off, if you still set yourself that minimum, you'll just make sure that you're not buying and instantly losing money the, the day you buy. It is very easy in property to, to either lose money when you buy or to make considerable amounts of money when you buy. So take that time, make sure what you are buying is at a fair price or a considerable discount if you are looking at buying for, for financial reasons. So there you have it guys, that's my five tips that I wish I was more clear on back when I first bought my own property. And I hope they bring you some value so that if you are looking at buying your first home or, or buying, branching out and buying your first investment property, you can set yourself some rules and really nut down and work out exactly why you're buying and, and take some steps there to, to be confident in what you're doing moving forward. Thanks for tuning in guys. Look, if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button or subscribe. We bring out a heap of content on this channel. Um, and love bringing you new videos each week. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.